Hello and welcome to yet another cast. For you today I have a 3-3 plate on rocks map gen and on the matchmaker. We have team 1, the blue team, in the well northeastern side and not northeastern northwestern side. Got still having a hard time with east and west. And the second team, team 2, um, going in the red colors in the southeastern side. This is actually east. Looking at this, we are on a 20k base, zoomed in quite a bit, so probably 12.5k. And you might notice this is actually on full screen. I uh, did record something a bit earlier where, where I actually did change the full screen for that, but of course I thought it was more reasonable, but I forgot to change the settings, so I guess I'll um, stick with this now, even though I don't really like it due to just full screen and path being a bit funky. Anyway, let's introduce the players. Let's go for the singular slot for Team 1 first in the southeastern, not southeastern, southwestern corner. Well, not too far south, but yeah, anyway, in dark blue, going Aeon and opening first land, we have Derp, a fellow content creator on the NFF community. Link to his channel and stuff will be down in the description. Another one of the casters. Definitely worth checking him out. If you ask me, probably a lot more talented than me, but I don't know. Anyway, to the north of that, in uh, purple, that is what this color is called, going UEF, opening first land, we have Rammel. And to the east of that, in normal blue, going Seraphim and opening first land, we have Banana Smoothie. Now, for team 2, let's start with the isolated slot again. Going Cyprin, opening first land, and Burgundy Red, we have Cal. Then to the south of that, in orange, going uh, Seraphim, and opening first land, we have Sub Q. And last but not least, in red, going Aeon, and opening first land, we have Chimsna. What the fuck is that name? Chimsnaino, I think. Chims. Chimsnaino? Yeah, something like that. That just, well, that just threw me off. But yeah, going back uh, to the distri distribution of players and general uh, map stuff, we do have in the um, uh, in the top eastern and um, or and bottom western corner, we have the we have two well technically slots for two more bases. So I think this might have been on a, a four team uh, base or something like that where only one of the players spawned, meaning that that player will get double the maxes, but um, also be required to do some heavy lifting due to that higher eco. And also, to be uh, something that should be kept in mind with that is that that player will be isolated from the rest of the team. But, well, let's see how well Cal and Dope respectively can utilize that additional eco that they get. Now reclaim wise, not too much, a bit dotted around the, si uh, the sides of the um, air, uh, of the um, land masses. Uh, let me just put that out, come on, if you actually opened. 33.8k, around, yeah, around 2.6k, no, 2.8k more like, around that have already been reclaimed, so around 35k, 35, 36k, something in that, uh, in that ballpark. On reclaim, a total on the map. Not a super high amount, but also not super low, so it's probably gonna help out the players quite a bunch with some stuff. Now we already have some spam now coming out for top. Too surprising, there is a singular slan waiting right here in the middle area for sub Q. Blocking that max, and yeah, I think it's standing close enough on that max that it cannot actually. That that cannot actually be claimed properly, and due to this land being stealth, uh, uh, I think both stealth and cloak, it is also not detectable by actually us moving past. That will need Nasu or Omni, as it is standing still. T1 Bomber up in the north for Bramel. Well, I thought it was supposed to harass the stuff of Cal, but instead just going for landing first. Okay, now it's going after a max. Not usually what you target with a bomber, 
already anti in the area. Okay, it did pick off one engineer. But Interceptor catches it and there it goes. Just one engineer kill probably not worth it. Another Selen placed right here, a bit further north. Maybe also just to provide some intel. That's very cheap radar. And we now also have some T1 numbers coming out from Cal. Going for some harassment. Gun range started for Derp. So probably going to get a bit more aggressive with that commander. And... We have a single su uh, Sui out for Banana Smoothie, moving across the water right here on the um, side around the um, cliff coast of Kelt's position. Kelt's not mess, but that gets picked off by some spam just collecting around the uh, cliff edge there as well as the T1 bomber. Though both Primal and Banana Smoothie move through the water. And are now focusing down the uh, base, or well, position that belongs to Cal. Which will possibly mean that Durb might be facing two players here. Though currently it looks more like Sub-Q is actually going to support their teammate Cal. That would technically put the... Um, that put that would probably put Derp at a technical advantage in the situation just due to the higher eco, sitting on two bases from the get-go. But we will have to see how that pans out. Gun speed now also underway after the gun range has finished. And well, I was about to say we have some SUs tangling right here between Cal and uh, Bramble as well as Banana Smoothly, but no, they aren't currently. There was a T1 bomber trying to harass those ACUs, but proper interceptor coverage out from Bramble, meaning that that won't get too far. And with that, Cal not looking too hot there, not really being able to do much right now facing off against two ACUs. Let's see, any interesting place going out up here? Just more spam factories. I think, yeah, there are two air factories, but yeah. Most importantly, just more spam right now. Let's see, anything special down here? We do have T2 currently underway for uh, Snainer. Very, very slowly. That would be interesting, and we already have T2 Air out for sub-Q. Currently building an offer, and after that seemingly going right after a T3 HQ for T3 Air. Gun range now also going on for Chimsniner on the ACU. And a bunch of T1 bombers about to harass the um, base of Dope. Who also is at T2 land now. Uh, but there goes a bunch of T1 power due to those aforementioned T1 bombers. Now just going for second pass? No, they seem to be moving on to the base of Bramble right after. But yes, stop at T2, already producing some flak and some blazes. Also, interesting call, going for a bunch of flares right here. I'm not sure what the play here is with that. As flares are, well... They are li uh, light assault bots, and if I remember correctly, they are the best light assault bot. It's still a light assault bot and not a main battle tank. And they will still lose against Auroras. Alright, two Nothers went after, I think, a max right here for Dirk. Just more uh, T2P gens currently going up for him. And just a bunch of T1A in the area. Shooting down the Nothas, but another max that was about to reach T2 goes down for Dope. Very unfortunate. Now, in the, um, on the northeastern side in the meantime, we have Gun Upgrade going out for Bananas movie. Primal just finished T2. 
gun uh, going out for sub-Q. And Cal currently starting to build naval factories. Though we do now see Yanzians out for banana smoothie. And these are from naval tanks, or, well, hover tanks. Also, a bunch of Stinger gunships now out for um, for Bramel, starting to harass the uh, stuff of Cal. Taking out Maxus. So they are at T2 air, currently under uh, having started T3 air. But behind the opponent with that, since Sub-Q has now actually achieved T3 air. However, not uh, actually, uh, they haven't actually built any engines out of there yet, never mind, just started that. And they will probably, yeah, they will get that a lot faster than their opponent right now. Cal now starting uh, to build a bunch of uh, the scuttle torpedo launchers, firing into the uh, ACU of Banana Smoothie. But they are already moving out of the water to start harassing, uh, or will start forcing back units and also the ACU of sub -Q. Also, that does, of course, give the uh, chance to take those torpedo launchers out. Bremel, by the looks of it, just reclaiming uh, that stuff with the ACU. And... Korn? No, I'm not actually playing, I'm just casting. Today. And Pi is currently also not doing stuff. Anyway, um, Banana Smoothie going back into the water due to the overwhelming amounts of spam right here. As instead is still a major threat to that ACU. They still do need to be quite careful, and up to also with that finished gunner right now. Is well, with that both ACUs are have the equal have equal amounts of firepower, but Banana Smoothie already lower on HP and Cal providing supporting a spammer for sub Q means that. Banana Smoothie is currently at a bit of a disadvantage in this uh, right here, though there are now Ujibas and of course the Yenzines coming in for them, so that is not going to be too much of an issue there. And by the looks of it, Cal currently pulling back a bit. Bramble in the meantime has made landfall for a short second, but immediately falling back now with the spam closing in. Dope, starting shield. Currently, bad looks of it a bit behind on the uh, man situation right here. Being outspanned by his opponent. However, Chim Snainer currently still just spamming out T1. T2 has been achieved, but that seems to be going straight for T3, um, as well as just getting, sub, uh, getting up some of those T2 P gens. Banana Smoothie back in the fight with that ACU, now utilizing those Ishwas and Yenzins, which are just shredding that T1 spam. Quite nice um, opportuni opportunity there to wipe out the army. And that should also change the situation uh, in a way that they will probably stand a better chance fighting against Zapdos Commander. No, once again, they are falling back with this. ASF now out for sub -Q. Also, a bunch of T1 bombers, probably intended to harass some stuff of Dorp, considering the area they are in. And the ASF currently seem to outnumber the, uh, for sub -Q seem to outnumber the ones that Bramble has. Which was to be expected due to the earlier finishing of the T3 HQ. But interesting um, move coming out from Derp, with the large amounts of spam and the ACU right here on, the, uh, on his front gates, he makes, his, uh, he makes the decision to just completely bypass all of that, moving up t uh, onto the uh, over the pond into uh, directly into the base of uh, Jim Snainer, who has moved up some of their T1 spam into the area, but 
Well, it is just T1 spam up against the T2 spam out from DOP. And thus, those places will probably cause a lot of damage here. We do see a single obsidian on the land, but obsidians do struggle range wise against the place as they do have a lot lower range. And well, they do have similar DPS, and with all of the places out there from the up, not too effective. Supporting army for um, Schicksnader are also moving in to help out. And that seems to be enough to deter Dope's push for the moment. Uh, for the moment. No, that is a lot of T1 spam going down. I feel like most of the uh, T2 spam will, however, also go down in this engage. Or at least get heavily, uh, heavily damaged. And yes, it is. But utilizing the current lack of um, spam on the front line, it seems like Schienzenainer is utilizing that to start pushing against Dorp who is now starting to build up a firebase on the uh, front line just with two oblivion turrets, possibly some TMD, would be nice to see that as his opponent does um, have the access to T2 land and we could see some nasty uh, Evansong Evanbells coming out as well so it would be nice to see some uh, something to deal with that Job just pushing out with the commander, getting in some fire. Also taking quite a few shots, but with that shield upgrade he is able to tank that quite well. More hover spam moving over the pond. And we do now see the first harbingers on the uh, right here on the pond starting to reclaim. As the special ability of the harbinger is also that it has a bit of build power which allows it to reclaim. Very nice. Quite powerful at times, since you don't need to move up Reclaim Engineers to your front as well. But yes, that means that Red does have access to the T3 land, and that will be... Well, that is currently, I think, a bit of a mismatch compared to Do, who I'm pretty sure is... Yes, he is currently still sitting at T2, on the way to T3, but not finished on that yet. Looking back into the north, Bremel now going for a tactical missile. That's a very, very nasty upgrade, though there are already Zappers coming out for Kel. Maybe anticipating the play. Maybe also just overly cautious. And Kel, in the meantime, on the ACU going for the torpedo upgrade. A special upgrade that only the Cyprone get access to. For the. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think it's the left arm. Which gives a quite potent torpedo launcher. We do see some uh, flag batteries being built up by Banana Smoothie on the pond in the meantime, but well, those will just be taken up by the torpedo upgrade. Unlike the harbor flag in the area, due to being, well, harbor. But the torpedo upgrade finishes, it does now fire onto the flag battery, and that is about to go down. There it goes. Well, any second now. There it goes. Banana Smoothie by Luxford moved across the land now into the um, settlement, into the uh, southeastern pond. And starting to uh, push up from there. Already queued up with APD, I think. That is you now with Gun, Nano, and T2. Also, a bit of uh, T2 APD right here on the front as well, on the normal front. But getting up some T2 on that landing would be quite nice. However, there are already T2, uh, T1 bombers in the area starting to bomb the, uh, that stuff. So that will most likely not finish. However, the, uh, with that, then upgrade that ACU will be able to just tank that quite well. That's not too big of an issue there. Rommel falls back due to the Torpedo Commander, I assume. Which has taken out all of the uh, um, stuff right here. And is now building a sonar system, to, I guess, to figure out what is actually in that pond. In the meantime, Dob pushed out against um, his opponent, Shim's neighbor On the land. And is now facing that a bit, but... 
Uh, or, well, never mind, that is some skirmishing going on between the units of Banana Smoothly and Shims uh, Nainer's front lines by now. While Derp seems to be uh, directing that spam towards the um, eastern flank as well, supporting the play against Kel. Interesting call there. And now also with T3 land, getting up some redeemers. And, well, yeah, currently only redeemers, but it is probably not too bad of a call considering the presence of T3 air from sub -Q. As Redeemers are very good at taking out single targets. Flag battery built up on the water for uh, for bananas movie. Just being ba uh, bombed by a overwhelming amount of T1 bombers and a single strat bomber. So there goes that. Interestingly enough, the wreck actually still floating on top of the water. I did not know that. And now a big force of um, Wagners. Moving in for Kel against the ECU of Bananas Monothy. And those will definitely be a big, big threat. Hover spam for Dope moving over and starting a or preparing an assault against the base of Kel. Bananas Monothy into the yellow. Now top bombers coming in against that ECU as well. They need to get out of the water very fast. And for all of those torpedo bombers, uh, not torpedo bombers, those torpedo bombers, but all of those Wagners, that's not, uh, not looking too great. There's of course also still that strat in the area, which needs to be addressed. The ACU down to around 7.5k HP, makes it out of the water, gets off a nice overcharge, killing off um, uh, two of those um, uh, of those Wagners, but gets hit by a strategic uh, by one of those um, bombs and dies to the large number of Wagners. So we have our first ejection at the 20 minute mark for Team 1 for the first loss. And Dope going for advanced range on the ACU. Okay. Just finish that. And also get actually getting quite a bit of success with that um, assault onto the shoreline of Cal right here. Killing off, well, two maxes by the, uh, at this moment as well as a bunch of pigeons. And possibly even more currently, those seem to be just firing into, uh, those players just seem to be firing into a lot of different things, not really focused. Air factory going down. I think another max might be going down here as well. Yep, there it goes. And probably another one. Yep. But that is probably it now. There isn't much more. Yeah, this one isn't being targeted down, so I'm not sure if that will actually die. It might, yeah, no. And that one is also going down. Right, five maxes did actually die to, uh, due to this, so it wasn't too bad. Quite a bit of economic damage caused right there. Also, allow her tactical missile launcher placed right here for Bremel in the meantime, uh, trying to get her uh, cause some damage to, uh, to the max uh, to the maxes of Cal as well. But I already pointed out earlier that there is a TMD right here that is just preventing that from actually causing damage. Meantime, strat bomber for sub is still in the uh, in the air, flying around. Dope going for the heavy shield upgrade. If he wants to use that, co uh, con if he wants to continue using that commander against the um, now T3 as well as with the threat of that strat bomber, that's definitely a reasonable call as that will give the ACU a lot of additional HP. And while it is a very expensive upgrade, it is probably worth it. A bunch of a, a bunch of these um, hover tanks, and the blazes get lift uh, get taken onto a bunch of Illumina um, T2 transports. Just moving into the back, I think that might be a drop waiting to happen. Yep, they are moving. So I expect that that will be dropped right here into the back line of Red, of Gene Snyder. 
but we do have both ASF and NTs in the area patrolling. So not sure how successful that would be. Stealth upgrade going on for Cal. Also now just moving those Wagners through the water. Possibly preparing a assault onto the base that once belonged to Bananas movie. And that is now under threat from that. Since there are just hover tanks going overhead, but yeah. We have a single of them right here, but that will probably not stop the sword of Wagners. There needs to be more in, the to uh, in terms of defenses to actually prevent that from coming through. Sub-Q now also going for Nano, I guess just to prevent any kind of snipe plays. As right here on the back, that ACU is not really involved in much combat, so the only reason I can imagine people would go for Nano in their main base is just some extra safeguards from sniping. Big army for Chim's Nano now starting to push uh, forward, probably preparing a push right through the um, right through the land bridge or land connection up onto the northern island or northern um, uh, part of the map into the base of Bramel. But currently holding out a bit, however with all of that T3 in there, it is most likely actually capable of just breaking through the lines of Bramel. Derp has a few full, um, units in the area but nowhere near enough to actually stop this. So those will just go down. Also have a bunch of T2 factories right here, but those will most likely also just die now. Also not sure why they are all damaged, down to 500 HP. Since that all seems since that seems like an oddly specific number of HP. Maybe I missed around by something like that earlier and that just this timing it got mopped up with. But that push just continuing on. And well, some quick PD attempted to be thrown up right here by Bramo, but the building engi uh, the engineers building that were quickly overwhelmed. Asylums block off quite a bit of that damage and well, okay, that PD is still alive for a second. Well, what, uh, they start uh, starts going down now. Offums coming in, trying to help as well. Though I don't expect that to, uh, to be too successful. And Bramble now taking fire from that spam. Forced to get into the water to survive this. Why not survive it? Though there are now also Wagners down here in the water. Moving up, possibly to actually get onto that ACU. Taking that out. Yes. And Bramble taking a lot of uh, torpedo hits now. Unsurprisingly. Trying to get out of the water to maybe survive this, but I'm not even sure if they will be able to get out of the water with all of these Wagners. Wagners get out of the water, they decide to stay in the water. Top bombers come in, they do survive for a bit. Trying to dance around the torpedoes um, a bit, but honestly, yeah. Wagners get out of the water now. They can start firing into the ACU. ACU just doing some weird targeting, firing into the rock. And oh no, that's unfortunate. The ACU on an attempt to actually move it got uh, instead got a assist command onto those in uh, onto those ASF, meaning that it just won't move now. And thus, yeah. Well, okay, did get a rank of veterancy. Back up to 5k HP. Might actually survive this, and yeah, now it is actually moving. But the entire base up here has been wiped out by the incoming red push. With all of the air production and a lot of maxes, which I'm pretty sure were T3, so that is very unfortunate. 
We do have a bunch of broadswords in the area firing into that, and all of the flags seems to be taken out now, so those can actually cause a lot of damage. But major amounts of damage taken for Bramble right here. A lot of rebuilding required. And it's definitely painful to lose those six maxes, which I am pretty sure were... Yeah, looking at those reclaim values, five of those were actually tier three maxes. That's really, really painful to lose. The cap T3 Max Max uh, 46, if I remember correctly. No, it's, 20, uh, it's 27. I guess I just got that confused. Right, I think it's 18 base and 27 with adjacency. But 27 times 5 is a lot. That's over 100 math and come. And just down the drain. That's really, really painful to lose. But on a note of mass, looking at the current mass uh, banked, I am surprised that... We, I also better say that I don't see any experimentals coming out, but Dub is actually building AGC, and with the income of 245, that is definitely a good call. It's definitely a reasonable decision to make. It looks like there was some sort of raid, maybe it was those gunships we've noticed earlier, taking out a bunch of maxes up here, uh, in the base of Cal. Uh, meaning that Cal is now down to 67 or 68 mass income, which is not too great. And I just about saw it, did not get there in time, but Bremel has actually been swarmed by a bunch of spam out from Cal. I suspect that it was just a bunch of Ragnars. And that died due to that. They did try to utilize their broadswords to defend, but it was a little too late. Meaning that that did not succeed. Sub-Q already pinging the position of Dobbs Commander. Trying to, uh, maybe trying to end this game. But as you are probably aware already of the video length, this is not, uh, Dob is not going down without a fight. And he is playing this out. He did start nail production down here in the south. Already on T2 with some Exodus class destroyers out. Which will do a good job at just making sure that there is no incursion into Navy out from um, any player. Most notably, of course, uh, James Nainer. But also providing a limited ability of shore bombardment. I say limited due to the range of the extras not being too amazing. Does have a rather low range, but some pretty high alpha strikes, so that is quite nice. And looks like the map gen actually did a little bit of a well, little bit of a oopsie whoopsie, a fuck, uh, fucky wacky if you would like, um, uh, placing uh, two max spots too close to each other, meaning that those cannot actually uh, that only one of those can actually be built, which is really annoying. I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen that often, but whenever it happens, it's really, really annoying. Since, yeah, technically you do have the ability to play, uh, there is another max slot that could be taken. It's just, well, two uh, place too close to another, so the hitboxes of the maxes would be colliding, meaning that they can't be built in, the, um, in that position. Broadswords trying to rest the stuff up here for a cal, but they do have a bunch of mobile flag in the area, which does just take that out. And with the uh, T3 air grid down for derp, that's not going to do too much. Yeah, that's a bit of, uh, that is a bit of a problem right there. Okay, there are still some... Uh, UAF T3 engines and of course also the Seraphim T3 engines as well. We do see more Wagners and even some bricks now coming through the water. Starting the next assault onto the northern uh, island. 
and Dub finished the Galactic Colossus, which is currently just standing here menacingly, waiting to be given orders. There it goes. Look at that. What a beautiful specimen. And it seems to be going right into the base of uh, Jim Snainer. Is there any counter experimenters going on? Yes, they are building their own GC currently. Trying to do something. Those Oblivions in the meantime trying to hit some um, stuff right here in the water, but due to the nature of this map, they are just firing into the floor, into the ground, not actually hitting anything. Big land assault out from Dorp onto the base that well, once belonged to Cal. Now well, it's just a massive, massive ruin. And uh, that's not looking too great. A lot of Exodus now on the shoreline, starting to just fire into the spam. Waiting onto the cliff edge right here. Also trying to hit some stuff in the water. Getting in some free damage there. And yeah, by the looks of it, there is also a uh, UEF T3 engineer down here in the water. Just playing, uh, placing down a bunch of layer T3 SAM installations. To support the Infinity class cruiser, that's also down here and just throwing out those IA missiles. We do have an air fight commencing over the area, but with the presence of the cruiser and the SAMs, I am pretty sure that that will just go in favor of Derp. Yes. So it looks like Derp will be winning the air game now. But I'm not sure how is the air production for Derp looking right now. Well, we have a T2 HQ for Aeon Air. And currently no more air uh, no UEF air production back up, so... Yes, there is currently... Air is currently still a uh, bit out once again. And those are still just T1 factories now queued up. So it will take some time until Adobe can get back into the air game. But the air wind will be useful for the time being. Now, with the one naval situation, I would love to see a transition to T2 Navy and maybe start um, a start to get some uh, of those very nasty Torrent class um, missile ships out. As those are really, really good at bombarding shorelines or bombarding bases. And in the meantime, starting a full-on push through the land right here. Seemingly redirected the GC into that, instead of the uh, uh, naval play that I pointed out earlier. Also, seemingly almost finished with wiping out the base of Cal. There is some opposition from a few bricks, so that force will probably die now. But it uh, took out most of that base, so I'd say it was probably worth it. Army is now fighting for uh, Dub and um, Chimsnayer, uh, Chimsnayer. With uh, Dub having that GC in there, just sucking up those Harbingers and general T3 spam. But Chimsnayer's um, not ACU GC now also getting into the area. We do have a bunch of Wolfers trying to get in, but those are quickly shot down by the AA of Dub. And now we have uh, the spam of top also being sucked, uh, sucked up by the Southern GC. Which is on higher HP, so it will probably end up winning this engagement. Even though Dope's GC does have more ranks of veterancy. Still, it is far away from actually batting again, and yes. Chimps Nano's um, GC does actually win this engage. 
However, most of their spam did die in the process, only leaving the GC, but the bull most likely also used large amounts of his spam due to the tractor clause of the GC, and just general GC firepower. Though, yeah, that GC is taking a lot uh, of time to actually go down. If it even will go down, since it has been covered by a bunch of asylums, and yeah, it was alive in the end. And Dope did lose most of his army. But we do have a second GC waiting right here, behind the ACU of Dope. Ca um, I think it was pointed uh, point out a bit earlier that Dope was actually standing here, now with the advanced shield as well. Then point that out earlier, but yeah, that is 25k HP on top of the 12k that the ACU gets due to that veteran's rank. Or well, I think technically 11k hit base. Cal waiting in the water. Maybe he's uh, preparing to start an assault onto Dope. Another air fight commencing. This time it seems like Dope lost that one but is still able to force any air back due to the presence of SAMs and cruisers. And Chief uh, Maynard is going for an attempt to move some hover spam, some of those places over the water. I don't think that that will succeed. Due to the presence of the uh, destroyers. Right, the EGC that was um, in the area earlier, that was uh, involved in the fight earlier, has moved a bit into the water, maybe just to regen. At those uh, 17k HP, which is still quite nice, but not as much as it could be. Swarm of top bombers collecting for Zapq, maybe trying to deal with the Exodus last destroyers of Dog. A lot of the Zams now, going, uh, now taking fire from these places. But those places just being one-hitted by all of the uh, extras means that I don't think too many of these stamps will actually be going down. Well, this one will probably. Well, what am I saying? There will be quite a few actually going down. You know, there's just continued streams of places coming in, moving past these um, flares, so they will probably just go down, yeah. But those currently also seem to be the one thing stopping Zapku from actually starting a big bo um, naval uh, bombing campaign against the fleet of Dope. A laser upgrade started for Cal. Interesting. Interesting. I expect his, uh, his plan is to attack Dope from the water. So move up here. Surprise him out from the beach, and then just kill him with that. Now, is Dope aware of that ACU being there? He is aware that something is there, currently also wasting a lot of mass. Not a good uh, thing to do. He is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he is up quite a bit on uh, mass income. He definitely needs to utilize that. Though he currently does not have the power to actually spend his mass, it seems like. He needs to be building more P-Gens. And he's not doing that. You could say that that is a big drop right there. But Derp is aware of the presence of Kyle's AC right here, even though it does have stuff. There is probably just an Omni in the area. I didn't pay too much attention to that. Well, that is T2 Raider, not Omni. Yeah, there is an Omni right here. Uh, so that's not too surprising. Kel can't hide with that. And there are now wave break um, uh, torpedo launchers being um, built up right here on the shore, just to deal with that when it moves in. Now the naval spam does continue for Cheese Niner, and it does take out most of these players now. Derp moves in a bunch of Spectres to try and deal with that. 
also just all of these exodus, uh, but we also have a Saar now. Dope with two GCs on the front line, but those won't last too long against a Saar. How many uh, redeemers are in the area? A few. And the Saar is taking out the fire, so it is forced to fall back by the looks of it. I think this just looked like it was also taking some fire from the Serenities. Uh, just impacting uh, onto the Saar. No small by T3 artilleries. A special trick of the um, uh, Aeon T uh, mobile T3 artillery is that it can fire while on the move. It currently is not doing that. But it seems like the Redeemers were sufficient to take out the Zar. Meaning that Derp now has two GCs that can push into the land of Chisnana. The last tower push was repelled, but with great losses, including the naval HQ. And well, there are still, however, a large uh, there is still a large group of destroyers left, and those are still firing into all of these places, into all of that harbor. Dope now starting his own assault. Uh, Cal realizing the presence of torpedo launchers there, has finished that laser, but well, it is hard to move in there. Has taken a lot of damage, so he probably just. Was this ready to actually go for it properly after taking that laser, uh, taking that fire from these torpedo launchers? Besides to upgrade the, um, uh, besides to upgrade the uh, um, nano upgrade as well, but cancels. I could swear he just uh, his AC was just in the red. At least it looked like that. Maybe I was hovering over an engineer, uh, not an engineer, an escort or something like that for a second. That's why I was so confused. But moves up onto the land to try and just go for a frontal assault against Dorp. Bad call as there is a GC right here in the base waiting, prepared to be uh, given orders. So frontal assault would just be a suicide run. And Cal has done a great deal of rebuilding. Currently, however, just being bombed into oblivion by, dopes, uh, by a bunch of T-Bomb Bombers out from Dorp. As well as an Orphan in that area to, uh, that just takes down anything that is attempted to be built by Cal, so... Maybe this is also just a play to deal with death frustration after this game was not going as expected or something like that. GC right here starting to move. And the ACU is starting to fire upon some stuff. And has been detected by the G uh, and has gotten into GC range. Dub notices and moves the GC onto that, and there goes the HP pool of Cal. And there goes the ACU of Cal. Showing the first ejection of the Southern team, Cal at 44 minutes. Dub start um, attempting a landing with all of that hammer spam, but being repelled by all of the Southerners. And a bunch of. Wait, no, those are top bombers, those are not T1 bombers. Maybe just top bombers. Yeah, top bombers taking out access that might have been helping in uh, dealing with any of those short offenses. But Dope's naval production now completely wiped out as well. Just like all navy he actually built up. However, we do see a bunch of flag now just on the shoreline waiting to be utilized. Or not on the shoreline, on the water surface. Aircraft by looks of it rebuilt, including the uh, power. Well, at least large amounts of the power. Yeah, okay, Dub still in a big, big power store. But that might partially just be due to him building more pigeons. And yes, he can actually spend his mass now. He does have the power for that. And honestly, this is actually a pretty decent level of power balance as well, as that means that that is not over uh, that he didn't overbuild power by too much, wasting mass onto that. But still has suffi uh, sufficient power to utilize his mass effectively. Basically, the, uh, spa uh, the place where you want to be with your uh, power production. Have some had um, uh, 
to compensate for any um, uh, more power intensive builds, but not overbuild power by too much. Bunch of experimenters starting to push um, through the middle now for the Zafram team. We do have a checking out for sub-Q and two GCs out for um, Team Sna yeah, Snainer against three GCs out from Derp. Let's maybe just take a look how much reclaim do we have in the year um, on this area right here now. We're looking at 92k reclaim, that's more than the map started out with. Also, lots of reclaim up here in the area. Almost disappointed to not see that actually being reclaimed. As there's also another around 50k mass that could be utilized. And apparently another chicken did move in onto that push. But first chicken does go down just due to uh, running cut first into those three GCs. Not a great strategy, you have to admit. And Dorp now starting to build up a uh, firebase right here on the front, securing the area, getting some map control there. Meantime, base that once belonged to Cal basically completely wiped out now. That's r another around 50k mass that could be reclaimed. There's so much to be reclaimed and I'm very frustrated that there isn't much reclaim being done right here. Or reclaiming being done. A dope finished us all. Let's see, uh, Genius 9 does have another GC. Currently no other air experimentals by looks of it. But I'm pretty sure Dope currently does not have air control, so that is an interesting call. Sub-Q has realized, I think, might be uh, preparing to go for the dive now. As all of the AA in the area is just flag, which isn't too amazing against those uh, against those ASF. And the AA on the stars also... While it is decent, it's not enough to deal with it being just dived like that. And there it goes, just shot down over the water. Not the smartest uh, play to go for, to be honest. I think that would uh, that would have been better invested into a another into a few more GCs. On the note of GCs, big land push now starting for Dorp, with a fourth GC that just moved in through the water. And well, with the presence of another chicken right here as well, we can uh, it is at least balanced in total numbers of experimentals for both sides currently. A landing uh, onto the, uh, from the water has now been made once again, or at least attempted. Well, the landing has been made, it just didn't go anywhere. Didn't cause any significant damage. You're just leaving another big reclaimed fleet in the area, which is actually being reclaimed by Cheese Nene. Once you see for Dirk does go down, we do have a bunch of Wurthus now moving into the area. Is there any flag in the army for Dirk? Does not look like it. There are however now ASF, never mind, those aren't ASF, those are NTs moving in to try and deal with that. One uh, chicken falls down right here, another one like, moves in to take its place. GC dies as well for uh, Cheese 9 and no, she's Nene, she's a Nea. God, I completely butchered the, that name throughout this class, I think. Three GCs now down for Dirk. Last one taking fire, that would probably do, uh, go down as well. However, not before taking down one more chicken. And well, this graveyard is just 100,000 mass. Well, soon more like 120,000 mass. And dear god, that's so much. So much mass to be reclaimed. Harbingers utilized con uh, for the uh, continued defense of the shoreline. Mordorp continues to try and make any landings there. Now going for T3, maybe. 
so maybe we will now actually see those missile boats, those torrents. We do get an air fight that is won by sub Q, not too surprising. And another GC moving onto the front line. For the so, uh, though I'm not sure if that will be too effective with the presence of three experimentals preparing there. It will probably just die now. Kel suggesting a rush for a nuke. Well, I'm not sure if the nuke is the play right here. Subcute does go for it, but I guess the concentration is still even enough that Subcute will uh, can be sure that they will be able to hold onto their base. And Dorp currently does not have SMD. He did, however, start a Paragon. And got, well, a tenth of a way d uh, done with it. Which is more than you would expect. Especially for a just uh, for a um, uh, investment that has just been cancelled. Like, there's a lot of mass just sitting here. Might not seem like much, but Paragon does not have much of, uh, does not have a lot of HP and is extremely expensive. So. If Dup doesn't intend to finish that, I would suggest just reclaiming it to get at least part of the mass back. Because, yeah, that is just incredible amounts of mass sitting around, doing nothing effectively. That's uh, those three experimentals continuing their push. We do now see mass production of Othams out for Dub, as well as some Absolvers. Interesting, you don't see those too often. The Aeon Shield Disruptor does have a pretty high range, if I remember correctly. Let's take a short look. Yeah, that's a decently high range. And, well, it's not too effective against normal targets. I think it does just like 5 damage or so. It is super effective in taking out shields, as it does do increased damage against them. Like, heavily increased damage. And especially when you're fighting Harbingers, they can actually be quite useful since Harbingers, of course, have their 1k HP on, uh, on their shield. But they are currently not facing any Harbingers, so maybe not to play. Two more experimentals waiting right here, and the intention of those seems to be just going through the water. A derp in the meantime, moving up two GCs, maybe to start actually getting somewhere with the attempted land invasion. With the support of all of these bases as well. And now building battleships and torrents. Starting out with a battleship. Mostly I think maybe aircraft carriers and torrents would be the better player here since, well... Okay, to be fair, battleships do have a high range and can do decent job bombardment due to that. But I feel like aircraft carriers would be more effective as mobile A platforms and air factories. To just pump out more ASF considering the fact that DOP is currently behind on air. And also just creating a no fly zone. A nuke did finish. And it's already here, quite far ahead on the loading process. Does Dub know? Let's just check his view. No, he does not. And he also does not have SMD. His base, uh, his ACU is in a stealth field. And that Paragon is just still sitting there, not being reclaimed. But a emissary not started. Seriously, if you build something like that, and uh, decide that you don't actually want to build it, reclaim it. That's just so much mass sitting here. And he is stalling a lot of mass. <laughs> he could definitely use that. Not a song. Still think that that is probably not the play here since, well, he doesn't have air control. 
It is looking better than uh, with the last zone, uh, since he does have some ASF now, but I would still argue that it is the wrong decision here. Three GCs now uh, waiting to make a play onto the beach. And three experimentals, two GCs and one chicken. Trying to uh, starting a push against stop. Air fight does commence over some flag. And I think this does go in favor of sub Q. The SAR does move in to provide its AA uh, support. Taking out a bunch of the ASF, but now being dived. So it will probably go down, already basically down, completely down on its shield. That goes, taking a lot of hull damage into the yellow. Starting to fire onto the... Uh, onto the chicken. I think the target right here should be the uh, GC since it is on low health. It would be easier to kill. But the chicken is being hosed down by that massive, massive beam of uh, doom and does actually end up going down. Both GCs make it underwater. However, the Sun does have depth charges that can drop. And I'm pretty sure it is also dropping those. Well, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, there's some stuff being dropped, so. Definitely. Anyway, nuke finishes and it is firing somewhere. Ping is going for Dorps aircraft, which does. It does have. No, mind, it doesn't have an SMD. That's a nuke launcher. He did go for the same strategy, trying to go for a nuke. Big thing to point out here if you go for a nuke, build SMD. Because if you can go for a nuke, your opponent most likely can as well, and well, you just want to be on the safe side. But yes, a nuke flying over, and without any SMD here, I'm pretty sure both the nuke launcher and the entire aircraft for Dope will go down once again. Some ASF still make it out at a pretty good timing, allowing utilization of the aircraft till the last second. And there is now the first turn starting its um, bombardment of um, uh, of Dream's Nano space. There are now three GCs right here in the water. Dear God. And so much mass to be reclaimed. Why, oh why, is it not being reclaimed? Like seriously. All of this area could be reclaimed. Basically, uh, the majority of this is still in range. Well, definitely all of this is definitely able to be reclaimed. All of the stuff up here. The entire base up here that once belonged to Cal. Like, come on now, that's so much mass. <sighs> well, the emissary did finish, looking back at Dope's base. Well, let's just take a look. How much reclaim is actually on the, on the entire map right now? We are looking at around 240k reclaim. That's a significant part of a paragon. Emissary is now starting to fire down into the base of the uh, into the southern base as well. Not sure what it's targeting, and I can't see what it's targeted on, so not too sure. Asa has the, uh, has actually hit up a decent amount, and we do now have a sizable land push coming through uh, through the middle, pushing up into the northern base. Red is however now running into larger amounts of PD. And a bunch of iron transports though... Unlike the other T2 transports, the iron transport does not actually have the ability to fire at ground targets. I think the other transports are all able to do that. I know the Zyphon one is, I'm pretty sure the Zyphon uh, the, the UF one is as well. 
I think the Cybran can do the same. I might be wrong here. Honestly, a feature that I generally didn't uh, don't use, and most players, of course, don't use either because, well, you don't put um, the transports to fire onto armies. It's not really that useful. A lot of volcanoes now is bumped up by uh, James Nainer to deal with all of the uh, um, all of the missiles coming in from the torrent. But the battleships firing onto the shoreline as well are just taking out most of that, meaning that those missiles can actually get through, or not. Maybe they can't. Battleships forced back due to hover spam. Another nuke launched. Where is this one going? Going right here. Right next to the Starlet Paragon and the Emissary that will probably both go down. I mean the Paragon will definitely go down, but the Emissary probably as well. There's SMD right here that might be just out of range. And is halfway loaded so it will not load in time stopping that nuke. You know, seeing that Paragon go is really, really painful. Though simply watching it not being utilized for so long is also very painful. Now, the GCs of Dope actually did make their um, landfall now. And it's actually a lot of GCs now. Like, one went down here, so I think it's... For here, six, I think it was seven GCs that actually attempted, uh, that actually moved onto land. Two of them already down. Uh, the um, the, the Chim Snainer has actually just decided to control K now, with the developing situation. Another one of the GCs does go down. And this is now a 1v1 between Sub-Q and Dorp. And well, Dorp has GCs now moving into uh, on against the ACU of Sub-Q, so... I think it's very likely that Dorp will actually be winning this. A 1v3 throughout most of this game. And yes, locked onto the ACU of Sub-Q, there it goes, and Dorp does actually end up winning this game. Right, I hope you did enjoy this, uh, this cast, this was streamed live on Twitch, link to that will be, as per always, down in the description. As well as Dope's channel, definitely check out his content. He's also doing, uh, he also does casts and stuff like that. Definitely, uh, definitely uh, worth giving a watch if you don't do that already. Um, but yeah, if you did enjoy it, maybe leave a like, or don't, I can force you. Um, subscribe if you want to be notified when I put out more casts like these, which will of course always happen, at least for the probably next few months or so, guaranteed. <laughs> Basically un uh, until I really just get bored with it to, uh, to the extent that I just don't want to do it anymore, which is still quite a bit off. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope to see you again in the future cast, and to then, bye!